skeleton face. My name is Sabrina Sharp. I'm a model, so it should go without saying that I'm beautiful. I have long, straight, shiny black hair. My skin is smooth and perfectly proportioned in every way. My body is slender and fit. I'm in my late twenties. I'm what employers are always looking for. The only reason any other model gets a high-end job is if the employer needs more than one model, or if my schedule is already booked. The best gigs are always mine, if I want them. Don't get me wrong, I'm not without my competition. A woman named Courtney Kane is my closest competitor. She's quite the beauty. She resembles me, but comes up just short of my perfection in every department. In the industry, Courtney Kane is known as the poor man's Sabrina Sharp. You'd think Courtney would be satisfied with my scraps, but we models are a competitive bunch. No model likes looking up at someone else. They all want to be queen of the hill. Although I knew Courtney was bubbling with jealousy, she was always cordial to me when we were face to face. As was the case just recently when she offered me a bottle of white tea seasoned with goji berries and rose petals. She knew this was my favorite. I was rather parched that day and guzzled the drink down like a frat boy shotgunning a beer. That night, I was awakened in the middle of the night with a tingling pain on the right side of my face, similar to when your arm or leg falls asleep, but the pins and needles sensation was isolated to my face, especially around my right eye. As a model, my instinct was to run to the mirror and make sure my appearance had not been altered in any negative way that could impact my career. I let out an audible gasp when I saw myself. There was a dark ring around my right eye. It was almost like a bruise, but had a more permanent feel to it. I went into a full-blown panic attack. I started hyperventilating to the point where I passed out. I woke up the next morning to the sound of my cell phone chirping. It was my agent freaking out that I hadn't shown up for a gig on time or something to that effect. I didn't care about that at all. What I cared about was the inferno-like burning sensation cascading over my face. I rushed to the mirror and screamed. The area around my right eye was solid black, as was the majority of my nose. The rest of my face had turned extremely pale almost white. What was happening to me? I had to get to a doctor. I grabbed a shawl and a hat from my coat rack, opened the door, and froze when a realization came over me. I couldn't be seen like this. I got on the phone and told my agent to cancel all of my bookings, and I sheltered myself into my apartment. Over the passing days and weeks, several people from my agency and manager's offices came knocking on my door to make sure I was okay and to find out what was wrong. I shouted at them all to go away. I stayed all alone in my apartment and transformed. After a month, the majority of my face was skeleton white. Dark black lines accented my lips and the contours of my face. My crystal blue eyes altered into white ice. I had become Skeleton Face. I spent most nights crying myself to sleep and trying to figure out how this happened. It didn't take me long to make some not-so-brilliant deductions and conclude that Courtney Kane had put something into the white tea she gave me that day. Something that would knock me off the model mountain and allow her to hoist herself to the top. 
Then something unusual happened. I looked into the mirror and realized that even my skeleton face could not conceal my beauty. And I embraced it. For the first time in over a month, I left my apartment. My first stop was the magazine shoot that Courtney Kane would be at. It was my gig, but the poor man Sabrina Sharp had the job now. I burst into her dressing room. The blood drained from her face when she saw me. She attempted to scream for help, but could only manage a tiny, pathetic gasp. I quickly informed her that she was in no harm. I just wanted to make sure she was fully well aware that I knew it was her who did this to me. I also told her to enjoy her moment in the spotlight because it would be short-lived. From there I went to my agent's office. There were gasps as I strolled confidently through the secretary's area to my agent's office. My agent about had a coronary. She thought this was a face tattoo and kept going on and on about how hideous I looked and how I ruined my career and I would never work again. I didn't care what she thought. I grabbed her by her power suit's lapels and slammed her against the wall. Look at me! She fought against my grip at first, but as she finally began to calm, I spoke in a firm, serious tone. Look at me. She took a few deep breaths and then focused on my face. Her eyes gazed over every centimeter of my new face. Now tell me, do you think I'm ugly? She realized I was serious and inspected my face closer. She even ran the back of her hand down the side of my perfect cheek, and a smile came across her face. No. She began to shake her head profusely. No. You're not ugly. You're beautiful. You're just as beautiful as ever, more so. And she was correct. My agent immediately began working the phones, and now I'm in more demand than I've ever been. So many models look alike nowadays. Many clients welcome something unique. And my new face has opened even more opportunities for me. I'm very popular within the horror world now. I'm on movie posters, magazines. You may have even seen me on a book cover or two. Or five.